Hello, it's Ricardo and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Time to look at the roadmap and console updates. The updates on transfers, if you want to transfer from your console to a PC and what the year and next year ahead is going to look like for Elite Dangerous Odyssey players. So, it's online. Let's go through the forum post. Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Well, there's been an announcement. Oh, yes. Wednesday, the 4th of May, May the 4th be with you indeed, we've had an announcement from Paul Crowther, the community manager, and it states, Greetings, commanders. We'd like to thank you all for your patience while we've been working on our communications and development plans for the remainder of the year. Now let's just, just take a moment here. A lot of people, a lot of people in the community, a lot of content creators have come over as being quite negative. Oh, the game's dying. Oh, there's no development. Oh, nothing's happening. Woe is me. Let's go to Star Citizen. Let's play No Man's Sky. And that's everybody's prerogative. That That's no problem. I maintain it. I have had fantastic fun in this game and we've been playing it and live streaming it on Saturdays and Sundays and we've had a blast. Let's just get this clear. They continue. Following the launch of Odyssey, our primary focus has been on performance, optimization and bug fixing, along with adding more features. Well, that's true. We've had the fleet carrier interiors. We've had the Scorpion. We've had the whole Odyssey gameplay as bug ridden as it was, let's not forget, we went right the way back to the beginning of the launch last April, um, when it was in beta and then the release. So it's about a year, probably around about to the date. Um, optimization problems, high end PCs not being able to run it. But let's face it, David Braben came in. Don't worry, we'll fix it. Personally, I think it is head and shoulders above where it was and here we are so you know by a copa that's only going to work a few more times really before they completely lose it i believe so as they say they focused on performance optimization bug fixing along with adding more features this focuses on a knock-on effect it says with regards to our plans for this year and beyond so they've realized the game's been released it wasn't as they wanted it was all different reasons, pandemic, the code base, and it's delayed them. Right. They then state, we understand the concern and frustration this has caused and hope this post goes some way to alleviate those feelings. And like I say, I mean, I, I struggled to find a positive word when I looked through YouTube this morning. I really struggled, right? Below we discuss profile transfers for console players and give an overview of the updates coming before the end of 2022. So, as we know, Elite Dangerous Odyssey is not coming to consoles. Our hearts and minds go out to console players. They were certainly unimpressed. As you can imagine, a game you've invested so much time in, no longer going to be developed. They're going to move forward and continue the narrative on the PC. We're not going to go into all that again. That's what they've said. So the console profile transfers. People who do want to migrate to PC. At the moment, everyone was going, well, I can't migrate. I can't go to the PC because I'm going to lose all my in-game stuff, right? And, and that's taken years to accumulate. And you get it. You understand. You empathize with players. They've come out and what they've said is, we can now confirm that players will be able to copy their profiles from console to PC in light of Odyssey's cancellation on Xbox and PlayStation. This process will be time limited and optional. We will provide a date for this process once it's confirmed. I've always wondered, why not release it on the next gen consoles? They seem pretty powerful enough to me. Okay, the Xbox. PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One is getting long in the tooth. Nearly 10 years old now, if not. Yeah, about 10 years old. So I get it. Anyway, the original profile will remain playable on console. So they're leaving everything there. They're just going to migrate over. 
and the new PC profile will be a copy. Only one profile may be copied over per copy of the game. Okay. Please also be aware that this will be a one-time only process. So you can't copy it all over, go oh, cop this up. Let's copy it over again from the, the old Xbox. You won't be able to do that. Elements that they're going to copy. Ships, the hollow me, which is how you represent yourself in the game, which I think for console players, mm. weapons, SRVs and SLFs, the fighters, including the Cobra Mark IV, if owned. Okay, what about the Viper Mark IV? Another Cobra Mark IV was for people who had backed it and was given as a gift. I'm pretty sure the Viper Mark IV was as well. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Anyway, core progression. And the core progression of the core game includes your inventory. So that's, hey, you know, what you got in your fleet carrier and all that guff. Um, all your weapons, your modules, all that stuff, your ships. Your reputation will be copied over good or bad, your permits, your codex discoveries, engineering progress, guardian tech broker progress, NPC crew progress, and cosmetics. Now, cosmetics, a little asterisk next to it, right? Cosmetic items applied through the library, uh, ships and fleet carriers, and hollow me will remain applied. Brill. Absolutely fantastic. So what won't be copied then? Now here's the humdinger. Commander name, although this could be a good thing, right? You can now then choose a different name. Now, you know, I've got my commander name in game. It's Commander Rich Owen. Uh, shouldn't have done that, right? Um, my other commander, I typed in Commander Ricardo. So my name is Commander, Commander Ricardo. So all these things that you really have to be sort of like weary of, okay? But hey, you know, we are where we are. Um, the arc balance, and it's two asterisks next to that one, right? So the arc balances cannot be transferred. We recommend that anyone who submits their account for the transfer process purchases any desired cosmetics beforehand. Any unspent arcs post-transfer will remain available on the original console profile. So you're not going to lose them, right? Just spend them. Buy your stuff that you want. And then, you know... You, you might get, you're probably going to take a hit for a couple of pound. Anyway, that's what they're not going to copy. Um, the squadron membership won't be copied. Friends list, block lists, and private groups. So you're going to have to reconfigure all that again. That could be a bit of a fag. Um, current mission progress. NPC crew names and appearances. Fair enough, we can live with that. Fleet carriers and their contents. Fleet carrier ownership cannot be transferred from one commander to another. To players that wish to own a fleet carrier post-transfer, they advise the following. Decommission your fleet carrier ahead of the transfer. Get your money back. Wait for the decommissioning to complete, which is two weeks. Check that all the credits from the decommissioning have been returned in-game. Complete the profile transfer process and repurchase a fleet carrier on a PC. Now, you might not have enough. You might have to go and grind it up. And again, that's a bit of a humdinger. So that's all about the console transfers. Now, let's talk about this roadmap. Right, here we go, roadmap. Here we present our top level roadmap of the remainder of 2022. Our three focuses before the year ends and launching the next phase of the narrative, whatever that might be, stability and optimization. So that would probably go towards perhaps the Azimuth narrative that's been running for two years might be coming to an end. Right, as it's saying here, the Azimuth saga will conclude in a grand finale event, the consequences of which will mark the beginning of the next stage of the elite story in update 14. Now, update 14 is coming in November. So we're in May now. So May, we're going to get, you know, update 12, fab. Um, then we're going to get update 13, and then update 14 in November. Anyway, I digress. Meanwhile, updates 12 and 13 will mainly focus on quality of life changes, stability, and optimization. Yeah, get it working. 
Let's no longer have any bases where you've got to go in there and shoot 14 people and there's only 12 there because one's wandered off and one's spawned in the middle of a reactor. You can't get at it. Or they lock the doors and all these other problems that we have. Try and go through that list. You've got two updates. Fix as much as you can, hopefully without breaking as much as you can. That's a bit salty, isn't it? I didn't mean it to be. Work has also begun on a major feature overhaul for 2023 that they'll discuss later in the year. A major feature overhaul. Could this be power play? That needs a major feature overhaul because it is boring. Right? Um, please note that the details and timings of each release are subject to change and that any adjustments will be shared ahead of time. Beyond this, we are also discussing additional game content and reveal it once it's confirmed. Great, so let's take a look then. May 2022, update 12. A new mission variant, fab, can't wait. Stability and optimization, fantastic. August 22, update 13, and lucky for some, we're going to get some narrative content, right? So they're going to drag the old Azimuth saga along, right? Um, stability and optimization. November 22, coming up to Christmas, update 14. Next major narrative phase, so we can expect around, I don't know, September, October time, the Azimuth thing starting to come to an apex and more stability. And then early 2023, a key feature overhaul. And we got a little graphic down here of what's going on. So development updates and streams. Following the launch of Odyssey in 21, we started publishing monthly development posts to share our progress on subsequent updates. In light of the remaining updates for 22 being confirmed above, these will not continue. However, we will still provide detailed patch notes. Great, let's know what you're fixing and we can help if it goes wrong. Information and other relevant details around updates and hot fixes as they are released between each development post. Regular streams from the community team have returned, although they were cancelled last week. Anyway, going forwards, these will be fortnightly. Because let's face it, there's only so many times you can say, there's nothing to report. And we watch a couple of guys playing the game that you could be playing on Twitch. I mean, let's face it, they are releasing Twitch drops, and that's why a lot of people are watching it. Let, let's cut through it, that's where it is. So they're going to be fortnightly, on a Thursday, between 4 and 6 GMT. This additional time between streams will allow us to put on longer shows and take full advantage of the in-office studio. Great, good stuff. We get some good production quality, because it's getting better, isn't it? Frameshift Live has only just started and we have many exciting ideas to explore in the future. And if you've not been watching the streams, uh, blah, 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 uh, you can get Twitch drops and be earned by simply watching. Okay. Now, just something good for me. Uh, we'll also be launching our partnership program later this year, offering content creators their own exclusive Twitch drops their communities can earn by watching them. More on this in the coming months, and we hope this post clarifies our continued support and plans for Elite. So, I'll certainly be signing up for that partnership program for the streams that I do on a Saturday and a Sunday. What do we all think about this? Well, not bad. They've come clean. They've let you know what it is. There's been some damning YouTube videos out there, and you got a feel for them, really, right? I know the console commanders are going to be bent out of shape, um, but there is now the option to transfer your gear to PC, should you be fortunate enough to be able to get a PC. And I think prices on graphics cards are coming down to about pre-pandemic level now, as they're getting more and more available. So it's not like right in the height of the pandemic, you couldn't get any of it because, you know, all the processors were, had been cancelled. So what do I think? Well, great that they've come clean. We've got these updates. We've got, you know, the elements that are going to be copied in regards to fleet carriers and the console elements and, and all the rest of it. Great. And we know that the Azimuth saga is not going to drag on any longer, or certainly not past November, because that's when the next major narrative phase is going to happen. We hope, and like they say, this is all subject to change. But put on our happy faces and let's remain positive. 
I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this, going through this update on the forums of Frontier. I'll put the forum link in there so you can take a look as well, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Stay safe.